Well, good evening. It is July 17th. Um, it's a little bit later today. Uh, we normally do them a little bit earlier, but I think it'll be fine. Um, today I want to talk about the idea of respectful disagreement. Respectful disagreement. The idea that we aren't going to see eye to eye, and instead of belittling you or um, disrespecting you, to still treat each other res with respect and love. So let, let's 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 kind of think about this. You know, I, I I don't think I'd be surprising anybody if I said that we are definitely living in very divisive times. <laughs> if you didn't know that, surprise. <laughs> um, there's just a lot of rudeness going on. Um, kind of a zero tolerance uh, thing that, that started happening, and I find that a little odd. Um, I remember. Seems like it was just last year, everybody was talking about tolerating everybody and everything. Uh, everybody was talking about coexisting about everything. Well, well, now, you know, well, now that there's actually something that we should probably um, uh, not uh, try to bring peace to, now <laughs> nobody's saying coexist anymore. And, and meanwhile, before they were saying coexist because, hey, n the, whatever your truth is, that that's fine. And, you know... Let's muddy the the pools of truth. Well, now, now that we actually are living in a gray area, um, it's become a lot more difficult. So there's just a lot of rudeness going on, um, and there's kind of this idea going on that if if you don't agree with with me, you are part of the problem. You know, there, my view is the only view that can possibly be right. You know, just complete narcissism, complete egotistical, my way or the highway, everybody else is wrong except for what I think. And, you know, if you don't agree with me, you are part of the problem. It's like, well, it's, the thing is rarely are that simple. Um, and, and a lot of what's happened is, is some factions, factions, you know, where people uh, grow up into groups, uh, cliques. Uh, you have to take a side, you know, either you are this or you are this, and, and it seems like with everything there's this different factionism that's going on. You've got, you know, you've got uh, the things that's going on with, with protests. You have to be on one uh, this side or this side. If you are for the protests, that means you're also for the rioting. There's no in-between. Um, you know, if you're, you know, it's either you, you hate America or, you know, you're... Um, it's just everything's split apart. Um, politics, either it's this guy or this guy. And you have to be a 100% supporter of whichever one. And you can't disagree with anything. You have to only vote for the perfect candidate. Well, <laughs> still waiting. <laughs> and um, kind of just this whole, you know, either or. And another thing with the masks, everybody... You know, you have to take a side with the masks. There's, there's no, no making way for each other. There's no, uh, you know, uh, trying to make peace with others. It's no. This is the way. This is how we all have to see things. Um, and and we've gotten to a place where there's really no room. There's no room for diversity anymore. And I think that that's kind of kind of causing some problems. Uh, not just so much in the world, which yeah, okay, but also in the church. It, it's important that. As Christians, <laughs> we we can't we can't hop on this whole either or bandwagon. This is this is something that's not that's not good. Um, I know everybody's saying, oh well, you have to you know you, you're either you know this or that, this or that on everything. It's it's but Christians really have to live apart from that. And so one of, I'm going to look at uh, four different verses tonight. And the first one is in Matthew 24 10 through 13. Uh, Jesus is talking. And they are trying to get him to uh, say something to you know so he'll get in trouble. And it says in ver starting in verse ten, at that time many will um. Ooh, actually I don't want to read that one yet. Um, let me read this other one first. Uh, Matthew twenty four ten through thirteen. At that time many will turn away from the faith and will betray it uh, and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. And then in verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness, this is the part that, that really stuck out to me. The love of most will grow cold. No more love for each other. No more, you know, and, and the Bible says, they will know that you are Christians by love. And then here, 
It's like, oh, the love will grow cold. And then verse 13, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. So how could this possibly happen? Well, <laughs> I think we're seeing some of that of how that could possibly happen. So some of Jesus' critics, now I'll go back to that verse that I was about to read. Some of Jesus' critics tried to get him to take sides in, in their own factions. You know, you know, just like there are factions right now, cliques, you have to be either or this or you're that. You know, if you don't agree with me, you're part of the problem. They actually had this same thing happening in Jesus' day. Um, there was some Jews who were called, there were radical Jew, Jews, they were called zealots. One of them turned out to be a disciple. And then there were uh, other people who thought that the, um, that the uh, Romans were good. You know, and, and then you had obviously people living in between and whatnot. So you had a lot of a lot of factions and people all expecting Jesus to take a side, just like just like nowadays. Um, and some of Jesus' critics um, tried to get him to take sides in factions, and uh, <laughs> for or against the emperor, who, by the way, was actually a very evil man. Uh, and so before I say before I read this verse, yes, character does matter, issues do matter, justice does matter. But in the story, Jesus completely refused to take a side in this whole political faction thing that the, that the Jews were trying to do. And uh, let, me, um, let me read that verse now. It's Mark 12, 13, uh, and we'll read through to, uh, I think it's 17. Later, they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They were just waiting to catch him in a mistake. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others. You pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me? He asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought the coin and he asked them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. See, they're trying to get him caught up in this, in this political thing. It says in a part of John that they were trying to take him to uh, make him king. And so he had to slip away through the crowd like, Oh, not on, not on my watch. You know, and so they keep trying to get him sucked into, you know, take sides in the political things that are going on. And Jesus keeps focusing, trying to focus them back on his main message. Um, and I think that sometimes we just become masters of criticizing everyone else for everything. Not just politicians, I mean everyone. You know, we, we kind of, well, they're doing this wrong, they're doing this wrong. And I think that's one of the dangers of Facebook is you see this, this hollow image of a person. It's not really who they are. Everybody tries to pretend like there's something that they're not. And you know, and then we start seeing all the stuff that they do and all the stuff that they post and maybe we see them in real life or whatever and we start becoming Facebook people where we, we just judge the person and there's no interaction, there's no commitment to the person. And so whereas they kept trying to get Jesus to focus on these different factions, Jesus was focused on bringing people to God. And I think that that's something we could definitely learn from. Um, even John the Baptist before Jesus, um, he had a scuffle with, with, with the leader, the, the, the political leader, which was actually Herod the Great's son. So Herod was the guy who uh, tried to kill Jesus by slaughtering the, the babies in the village. That was Herod. So Herod's son, well, he had a couple, but one of Herod's sons um, had a little bit of a disagreement with John the Baptist. Um, not because, excuse me, not because of what Herod said, not because of politics or John the Baptist playing that game. No, it was because he was in an immoral relationship. This is completely different from what we complain about. We, we, we find the, the, the mistakes in every person and we, and we, we think it's our duty to cause as many conflicts as humanly possible. And I think that if we dedicated that same amount of energy and time into loving and serving people, I think that the world would be a lot better off. So let's, let's read that in Matthew 14. It says um, in verse, I guess we'll start in verse 3. Now Herod had arrested John and bound him and put him in prison because of Herodias, 
his brother Philip's wife, for John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. See, John the Baptist had this disagreement with him, not because of politics or any of that stuff, it was because he was in an immoral relationship. And John was trying to get him to repent and to go to God. So, you know, it's at this point where, where kind of our self-will gets up. You know, when we start saying, well, the things that, th this stuff matters. You know, here's the thing. Making peace in a situation doesn't mean you're wa whitewashing evil. It doesn't mean that you're a yes man. It doesn't mean that you're ignoring the fact that evil is being done. It means none of those things. Bringing peace, well, let's come back to the idea. The evil done by politicians does matter. And I, I really do understand why people get so upset. I really, really do. Um, I'm just not sure that it's always overly helpful to say views on everything publicly consistently. And the reason why is because it turns people off. People aren't into having arguments all the time. And sometimes some things are, are more worth more if they're said face-to-face -face rather than just posting it. There's a lot that could be said there. I'm, I'm trying to be vague enough where it'll apply to everybody. Every politician does evil. I, I don't know if, if, if we just don't realize that or if we just don't want to admit that our guy does evil too. Pretending your guy is a saint and the other guy is the devil is pretty unhelpful, especially when you're trying to make peace. It, it, let's say, for instance, that I am a big fan of uh, Biden. And let's say that you're a big fan of, of Trump. And so you are saying, okay, Trump does nothing wrong. He's great. And I say, no, you're wrong. You're an idiot. Trump, Trump is an evil racist. Biden is, see what I mean? That, that, that's pretty unhelpful. And if I'm trying to make peace, it it's, doesn't do much good to find more and more things to separate us. You actually have to f try and find things to get us to live in peace with one another. Um, and I know that that's hard because we're told that politics are all that is important in the world. You know, we've got Hollywood is important, politics are important, and, um, well, I guess that's it. And that's not really the real world, though. Pe there's a lot of people who do living and dying and working out there who aren't politicians. And I think that sometimes we just need to be reminded that we as Christians really have to try to make peace, especially in such chaotic situations where there aren't peace, where there isn't peace. You know, every person does evil too. It's not just politicians. You know, I, I know a lot of times we sit around, and we, we we talk about, oh, this politician, that, this politician, that. But every person does evil, and I'm not trying to justify them, but I'm trying to say there's a certain mindset that goes with it, where I start shifting my attention off of seeking God. And instead, I shift it on to judging everyone around me. And there's just this little subtle shift. Now, once again, I'm not saying that, it, that justice is wrong, or I'm not saying any of those things, but we can't pretend that we are perfect. And I think that it's very counterproductive to try and... It's the, our, church's, our church's statement, we are trying to build bridges in the community, and we're trying to bring people to God. That's it. We're, 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 not ha we're not trying to convert people to our religious views. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, um, to our political views. <laughs> sorry, I misspoke there. We're not trying to, you know, cause problems. We're not, we're not trying to just start fights for no reason. There, there's, there's something more important. And it's pretty counterproductive to major on politicians instead of majoring on how are you today? How, what can I do to help you as a person? You know, and, um, you know, how, can, I, can I pray for you? Can I, can I do something to help you? You know, and I think that that would be a lot more beneficial. You know, we've tried the whole gossiping and complaining about politicians 24-7. We've tried that. For, for the past couple of years, we've tried that. It has accomplished nothing. People are more dissatisfied than they were. Um, we don't have any more righteous politicians. 
you know, and it seems like we can either waste the rest of our life talking about politicians saying everything that they're doing wrong all the time, and that's great. You're going to become a self-righteous person and won't accomplish anything. Or we can focus on being the change. You know, Michael Jackson actually, and I know it's, you know, what? But yeah, Michael Jackson actually sang a song about this. I'm, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm starting with me. And I think that a lot of other things would be done with raising, raising our kids, you know, helping each other in the community. That's, that's, where, the, that's where tomorrow's leaders come from. And uh, so y y remember, you will be judged as you judge. Re so whenever you're, whenever you're sitting around just judging politicians or your neighbors or, you know, all these people or that idiot on Facebook or YouTube, just remember you will be judged with the same, with the same measures that you judge someone else. And I'm not just talking about by other people, I'm talking about by God too. There, there's enough factions. There's enough division. There's enough chaos. It's time that the church take a step back and say, look, this, this is not helping anything. I want to be part of the solution. Let's make peace where there isn't peace. Let's, let's find something to agree on. Let's maybe stop ranting on Facebook about, you know, uh, conspiracies and, and what everybody else is doing wrong and whether I'm going to wear a mask, whether I'm not going to wear a mask. Let's just love each other. Can we do that? Can we, can we just set aside all this stuff? It's like every time you enter in a conversation anymore, it can't just be, hey, how are you doing? It's like we don't even care how each other is doing. Let's talk about what's really important, that you're a complete moron for wearing a mask or for not wearing a mask or whatever your, your side is. <laughs> and it's pretty unhelpful. So yes, yes, justice is a good thing. We should stand up for justice. We should do that, absolutely. But remember that it's not always as black and white as the media says. If you're not, you know, supporting this movement, then you're the world's worst person. It's like, well... But I will say this. Proverbs talks a lot about not saying things in a very foolish way. So maybe when you say things, make sure you say, say it in a wise way. And then also, a lot of times, we make the mistake of mixing politics with, with our salvation. You know, if, if, if you want to be a Christian, you have to be a Republican. Um, if you're not a Democrat, then you can't really be saved because you don't really care about people. You know, this whole either-or line of reasoning. Either you agree with me or you're wrong. And it's like, well, you know, that, that's pretty unhelpful. Um, one thing that I try and do that I think really helps me when I'm in that kind of negative mood of just trying to find everything wrong with everything is to stop and say, I'm going to hold others to the standard that I want to be held to. I'm going to treat others how I want to be treated. And I think that that really helps. And I think that another thing that really helps is focusing on being thankful rather than on all the things that I have to um, complain about. And it really is a mind, a, 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 a switch in the way you think. So making peace doesn't mean, um, I'm sorry, making peace does mean being humble. It does mean being humble. What does it mean to be humble? It means you don't, you don't exalt yourself. I'm right and everybody else is wrong. What does it mean to be humble? It means I'm willing to listen. It means let's talk rather than you listen to me and I'm going to set you straight. That, that's not being humble. And I think that sometimes we, we, we obscure the lines between political fanaticism, patriotism, and religious zeal. I think that we just kind of cross the lines over. It's been happening for thousands of years. I'm not saying that this is a new phenomenon. But peacemaking doesn't just happen. And um, it can only be accomplished as we approach from humility. Wanting the best for other people, not just for ourselves. Wanting to, be, wanting to listen rather than just be heard. You're not going to achieve peace by being prideful. I'm right and you're wrong. Listen to me when I talk. It's all about me. And you're definitely not going to make peace by nitpicking. Let me see how, what all the wrong things that I can find. Let me just tell you this. For, for, my, for my friends who have mental um, issues, depression, anything like that, it's going to get to be too much. Now, you might say, you might try and guilt trip yourself by this, okay? If I'm not doing something to stop it, I'm, I'm helping it to get worse. Well, first off, that's not really true. 
And second off, that's an impossible standard anyways. And third off, you'd need a break. Really, you do. You, the, your, your brain and your spirit, your, your body can only handle so much strain and stress. And what has happened with this whole coronavirus thing is we've really gotten into kind of like a, a traumatic event. And a lot of people respond to trauma in different ways. Sometimes we respond with anger, sometimes with fear, sometimes with, with closing ourselves off, sometimes with oh, just all kinds of different things. And it w just remember to kind of take a step back and say, look, it's, it's going to be okay. I'm just going to calm down. Maybe get off of Facebook for a few days. Maybe, well, there's a lot of things that you could do, but I'm just seeing a lot of, on Facebook, especially on Facebook, a lot of this. I'm so much better than them. They're just so stupid. I'm so much smarter. I wish that, the, I wish that everybody was as enlightened as me. I see it a lot about masks. I see it a lot about politicians. I see it a lot about everything. And I think that as Christians, we need to remember that we are trying to portray Jesus. We're not trying to win people's uh, minds over about masks or coronavirus. We're trying to show people the love of God. That's it. That's it. Demanding that others support your guy or your view is not the same as following Jesus. Sometimes we think that if, if I'm not converting someone to be a copy of me, then I'm not following Jesus. And that's just, that's just once again, not true. You don't have to convert people to your guy, the guy that you're voting for. You don't have to convert people to your view. The great thing about America, check this out, is that you can have your own opinion. That's fine. And I think that we as Christians have forgotten that that somehow it's, it's, nope, you know, they're just wrong and I've got to do something about them. Well, maybe, maybe not. You have to go out of the way to make peace. And it is all the more necessary in these times that we do go out of the way to make peace. Because if we don't make peace, nobody will. You watch TV, they're not making peace. They're trying to stir stuff up. You, you, you watch the commercials for politicians and they're stirring stuff up. You, you know, you go here, they're stirring stuff up. Peace is something that we have to work towards and something we have to create in, in, in an environment where it's just not happening. If peace was easy to make, well, then everybody would be making peace. But it's easier to, you know, get in fights. It's easier to tell everybody else what they're doing wrong. It's easier to find the flaw in every, in every politician, in every public figure, in every uh, news anchor. And it's easier to do that. It's easier to sit back and say, look, they should have done this. They should have done this. They should have. But there has to be a point where as Christians, we say, look, the world has been doing this for for month after month after month and they're more miserable now than they were before we can't mimic the society in thinking that we have to get caught up in this um being disrespectful to each other um being intolerant of other people's views if you don't see this like i do you are wrong and i have to hate you it's like well it's not that simple you can you can you can hang out with people who you don't agree with on everything um, I actually have a friend um, who is, I would say he's Democrat, pr pretty, pretty strongly de Democrat, and I, 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 I don't really like politics. All politicians are corrupt, and I, I kind of think that it's kind of a waste of time to talk about politics because they never listen to you. You vote them in, and they just do whatever they want to do, and... You know, then whoever you vote for, the other people are gonna, the people on the other side are gonna say, "Look, by voting for him or her, you have condoned this and this and this." And it's like, "Oh, geez, why well, didn't know that I was doing this?" And you vote for the other person, and the people say, "Well, by voting for them, John the Baptist wasn't going around bad mouthing people. He wasn't going around bad mouthing people he didn't like, he didn't get along with. He wasn't gossiping and complaining. He wasn't watching the news all day and getting himself all worked up so he could go and rant on on Facebook. He, he wasn't doing that. He was telling people about repentance and not living in sin. And that was what got him killed, too. It wasn't trying to get the other guy elected. <laughs> he was talking to Herod about his sin, and Herod got mad, and he ended up dead. That's, I mean, that's, that's the cliff notes. So here's some ideas, okay? First off, make peace where there isn't peace. 
online in your house with your friends. Number two, talk to people with respect. When you talk to people, if you have something to say, say it, say it with respect or just don't talk. I mean, other solutions are totally fine. Uh, number three, uh, spend more time in the Bible than you are on Facebook. Spend more time in the Bible than you are on Facebook. Paul talks about in Romans, and he says, how can they believe that which they have not heard? And then we say, well, I have, I'm having struggle with, the, I'm having a real hard time with my doubts. I'm having a hard time with, with finding peace in all this because we don't care to listen to God. So spend more time in the Bible than on Facebook. Number four, focus on bringing people to God, not venting your own opinions about everything. See, if your focus in life is about bringing people to God, then it really doesn't matter what their view is on coronavirus, masks, politician, politics. It doesn't matter any of those things because the purpose, the point, is bringing people to God. But if your point is venting your own opinions about everything, I have to be heard about everything, I have to have an opinion about everything, then that is going to be your all-consuming purpose and you're not going to be able to see clearly to help people because you're not going to see people you're going to see arguments so then fifth and i think this is my last little idea love and love and serve people instead of gossiping and complaining about people love and serve instead of gossiping and complaining there, there's always this 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 line that eventually will develop in your life where you will slink off to being ungrateful and gossiping and complaining or you'll slink off into being thankful and loving and serving people making your life about more than just yourself. And uh, I think that um, it would be good to close off with this verse. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 24, it says, A servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, but he must be kind to everyone. Another translation, A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but um, not, that's not the one I meant to read. Where is it? Well, I can't find it. The Lord's servant must not quarrel, but must be gentle to everyone. There's the one I was looking for. The Lord's servant must not quarrel, but must be gentle to everyone. So, and I kind of encourage you to just write that verse down somewhere. Second Timothy two twenty four. Don't be don't don't be quarrelsome, but rather be kind to everyone. It's it's kind of just this place where you're going to find yourself doing one or the other more and more until the other one isn't done at all. So I hope that this is helpful. This was helpful for you. I just want to remind you, please remember to be respectful towards people. Remember that the world doesn't revolve around you. Uh, remember that there are other people with their own feelings, their own ideas, and that's okay. And, uh, you know, remember to take a step back and say, look, I, I, I'm tired. <laughs> I, just need to, I just need to have a break. So I, I hope that you guys have a great rest of the evening. Uh, it's really starting to cool off pretty nicely out there. And enjoy your weekend. And I will see you on Sunday.